Hello again. Uh, we're back again for another presentation on the introduction to the Caribbean. This week we are talking about the Caribbean economies. Uh, we're drawing the information from Owen Blewett's interdisciplinary book, The Contemporary Caribbean Life, History, and Culture Since 1945. And so uh, we will take a, a nice, refreshing look at the economies of the Caribbean since 1945. So let's go ahead and, and start. This is our book that we're drawing our information from, The Contemporary Caribbean, History, Life, and Culture Since 1945 by Professor Owen Blewett. So our introduction before 1960, we'll talk a little bit about the decline of the sugar industry the beginning of uh, the growth of the tourism uh, industry, life on the periphery for Caribbean islands in the world uh, trading, global trading network. Primary sectors include agriculture, uh, sugarcane export, bananas, coffee, tobacco, forestry, fishing, mining. These are the primary economic sectors. The secondary economic sectors would include um, manufacture industry in Trinidad, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic, and the uh, third or tertiary uh, economic sector would be the service sector, which is a growing area in the Caribbean and certain islands, tourism, offshore services, drugs, and remittances. So that is our outline. Before 1960, most Caribbean economies focused on agriculture. Islands relied on agriculture exports to generate foreign exchange. Most jobs were in agriculture, and most people lived in rural areas. Sugarcane has been huge. We saw that as we were going through uh, Franklin Knight's book, The uh, Genesis of a Fragmented Nationalism, that sh the sugar industry uh, immensely changed the Caribbean and changed the demographic composition of the Caribbean as uh, coerced African workers were brought to the Caribbean to work on the sugar plantation, which Franklin Knight calls the exploitation colony. Uh, the sugar canes grown largely on coastal plains and bananas were also major crops. Coffee, cocoa, fruits, coconuts, tobacco, and spices were also shipped abroad. Many small holders grew crops on farm plots to feed their families and to sell locally. This is called subsistence farming, and it's uh, somewhat actively discouraged in a global capitalist uh, trading network. However, it also is one way for farmers to be most independent, is to grow their own food. Ranchers in a few islands, such as the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, raise livestock and chickens. So here's a uh, typical uh, market in, in Latin America or the Caribbean. Today, agriculture is declining everywhere in the Caribbean. And of course, the same thing is true in the United States. I come from a small family farm in Ohio. It's no longer possible to support oneself economically uh, viably as a small farmer. It has to be done on a large agribusiness scale in order to be successful. In many islands, agricultural production equals less than 5% of the GDP, the gross domestic product. Although the employment in agriculture is still relatively high in some islands, notably in Jamaica and Haiti, most islands import large amounts of expensive food from the United States. There is a uh, story I heard after the Haitian earthquake of 2010. And by the way, this week we're grieving as we find out that thousands of people have died in Haiti in the fall of 20, in August of 2021 in a new earthquake. But in 2010, there was also a destructive earthquake. Uh, my friend who worked there as an NGO relief worker said that there were stacks of, of bags of rice that were shipped from the United States to help the people of Haiti, but they completely destroyed the, the Haitian rice industry. The, the rice farmers in Haiti were put out of business because of free rice from the United States. So there are unintended consequences in these things. 
livestock industries involving cattle, pigs, goats, and poultry are significant in the Greater Antilles. Remember, the Greater Antilles, Antilles are Cuba, uh, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and Jamaica. Tourism in the contemporary Caribbean and the service sector has transformed the island economies, providing most of the jobs and contributing most of the G GDP. Tourism is a major driving force in the majority of the Caribbean economies. Newer service industries, as, such as offshore banking and insurance, are also growth areas. Industrialization has occurred in some of the larger islands, notably Puerto Rico, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Trinidad, and Jamaica. So here's a picture of uh, that kind of represents the uh, tourist industry in one of the islands. The world system. There's a particular area of study in international relations or economics called world system theory. The Caribbean economies are on the periphery of the world trade system and depend on the United States and Europe for their markets, investment, and credit and aid. The region imports more than it exports. And because the prices of most exports are lower than the prices of imports, deficits and indebtedness are the result. Debt, is a, debt as a percentage of GDP is high in many islands. Servicing debt is expensive and it stultifies economic growth. In other words, it dampens the economic growth. The primary economic sectors. Agriculture is, is the primary economic sector. The primary sector of any economy involves activities such as farming, fishing, mining, that directly exploit natural, natural resources. When the islands were European colonies, sugarcane cultivation became the dominant economic activity responsible for the Atlantic slave trade. Sugarcane changed the face of the Caribbean landscape and the people. Although sugarcane is still grown on some islands, the industry is losing profitability and is declining. The decline of sugar production. Sugar production has declined for a number of reasons, including competition from other countries, the end of price supports, lack of modernization, and a change of taste uh, in the consumer uh, from corn syrup to artificial sweeteners. Competition from cheaper production areas such as Brazil and Australia are significant. Although India is the world's largest sugar producer, Brazil is the largest global exporter. I suppose what that means is that India produces a lot of sugar that it also consumes in its domestic markets. Changing the world regulations signal the death of sugar uh, in the Caribbean. Recently, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, declared that Europe's preferential support for importing Caribbean sugar was, was an unfair practice. And so Europe is not going to be able to continue to buy Caribbean sugar at uh, preferential higher prices. Bananas. Banana, nanana. -na -na -na. Reminding me of a song from the Muppets, I think. Bananas have been an imp import, important export crop in several islands, including Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Dominica, Martinique, and Guadeloupe. Most of those, with the exception of Jamaica, are from the Lesser Antilles. Today, Caribbean banana growers, sometimes family-run farms, face stiff competition from cheaper growing areas in Central America and suffer from the phasing out of the preferential trade agreements with the EU. Banana exports are consequently falling, especially in St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and Grenada. One exception is Martinique and also Guadeloupe, who are members of the European Union by virtue of being French overseas territories. And so they do not have to negotiate treaties. Bananas are an important export for Martinique and Guadeloupe. So to import bananas from Martinique and Guadeloupe is basically like buying them from some, some department of France. They don't have to, it's not a foreign import. 
important. Coffee and tobacco. Other traditional crops such as coffee and tobacco are also declining. Coffee uh, is best grown on hill slopes, mainly in the greater Antilles, for example, Cuba, but it faces stiff competition from Brazil and other Latin American countries. Colombia comes to mind, Costa Rica. Tobacco is the most, tobacco is most signif significant in Cuba. Hand-rolled Havana cigars are world famous. Cigarettes and cigars are also produced in the Dominican Republic. I will also add, well, we're talking about the Caribbean, but some of the best cigars are produced in Nicaragua by Cubans who moved there after the Cuban Revolution. Tobacco in Cuba. This is a picture of, a beautiful picture of Cuba. I'd love to visit some of those mountains. And you see the tobacco farms there. I used to drive through Virginia and I would see tobacco drying in barns. Cigar making is an important Cuban uh, industry. It's an artisanal industry going back to the middle of the uh, 19th century or longer. And of course, Cubans, many Cuban moves, Cubans moved to Key West, to Tampa, to New York. And in Tampa, they, they was a, was a leading cigar manufacturing location. Also Key West was. In general, the production costs for agricultural commodities in the Caribbean are too high to be competitive in the world markets. One except, exception is marijuana, ganja. Ganja is the term, that, the name for marijuana in Jamaica. It, it's grown in several islands. Marijuana was introduced to Jamaica by indentured laborers from India. It's part of the Hindu religion. Now it's grown in Jamaica and marijuana enters the U.S. illegally. The Rastafarian religion in Jamaica uh, treats ganja as if it were a sacrament. And I'm not saying that ironically or humorously. It, it, it is a part of the religion, just as it's part of the Hindu religion. So here's a couple of pictures of ganja smoking from Jamaica. Forestry. Although most islands were forested before the European contact, many forests have been cleared for agriculture and to provide timber. The case of Haiti which was heavily involved in sugar production in the 18th century, is the most extreme, with less than 1% of the land in forests. This is a result of poverty. For the most part, it's a result of poverty. Poverty that was created by the uh, exploitation slave sugar production complex. A recent Environmental Sustainability Index ranked Haiti near the bottom of the world in terms of pollution and the abuse of natural resources. And there's a picture. Actually, this is a picture of Montserrat, the mountains and the uh, forest of Montserrat, one of the smaller islands, actually. But Montserrat is 60% forested. And it's a, there's a contrast with the Dominican Republic. Here's a picture of the Dominican Republic, which is at least 25% forested of its land which is a contrast with Haiti, which is 1%. Uh, mahogany, satinwood, pine, and cedar are grown in the Dominican Republic. Mountainous Dominica, Dominica sorry, in the Lesser Antilles is one of the most wooded islands with about 60% of land and forest, a useful selling point for the development of ecotourism. I'm sorry, this is Dominica, not Montserrat. 60% forested. I have not been there, but I hope to go. Cuba has important mining, an important mining sector with plentiful supplies of iron, chrome, cobalt, copper, manganese, and marble. And Cuba produces steel. Nickel, silver, and gold are mined in the Dominican Republic. Jamaica still exports both uh, bauxite and alum alumina. The secondary economic sector. The secondary sector involves industry, manufacturing, and construction. 
Today, most islands have small manufacturing plants involving food processing, beverages, cement, catering to local consumption. For example, an island might produce its own soft drink and bottle it. That would be the kind of manufacturing we were talking about. The islands in the Greater Antilles and Trinidad have larger operations with steel making in the Dominican Republic and the manufacture of pharmaceuticals in Puerto Rico. Obviously, oil terminals and refineries pose environmental threats. There was an emphasis a few years ago in uh, called Operation Bootstrap in industrializing Puerto Rico, and one of the things they did is they attracted pharmaceutical manufacturers. And then a lot of pharmaceutical manufacturers moved to China. I think it would be wise if we could uh, lure these pharmaceutical manufacturers back to Puerto Rico or to Central America or the Caribbean to take care of our own backyard. And I was looking for a picture of a oil refinery in Trinidad, and I found this article that about one a major oil refinery that closed in 2018 leading to unemployment. And now we're going to talk about rum. You see uh, rum Barcelo, uh, Angostura. There's several kinds of rum here. My friend, uh, my, my one of my close friends is a real a rum uh, aficionado. Rum and molasses are both exported with significant, um, significant amounts of rum shipped to the United States and Europe. Rum manufacturing is a long established industry in the Anglo-Caribbean. Mount Gay Rum of Barbados is the oldest continuously operating producer of rum with records going back to 1703. Captain Morgan Rum, which by the way is not, not one of my favorites, it's a little too spicy for me, but it's produced in Jamaica and of course it's referring to the buccaneer Henry Morgan when it says Captain Morgan. Who would lived in Jamaica? In Spanish territories, liquor is made from liquor made from sugarcane was called aguardiente, and was very rough and unpalatable. I actually like aguardiente. I think I guess they've improved it. It's white and has a sweet uh, menth, menthol taste or a sweet uh, licorice taste. Rum was a drink for the lower classes and was smuggled into the Spanish colonies from the British islands. Bacardi was located in Cuba and Puerto Rico before the Cuban Revolution. I think it, they established a uh, sucursal. A, uh, they established they were their headquarters in Havana, but they established a, a, a factory in Puerto Rico in 1930. Bacardi operations include Martini and Rossi, Dewar's Scotch, Bombay Gin, Tequila, Brandy, Beer, and various vodka brands. Puerto Rico now has the most industrialized economy in the Caribbean, and that's thanks to this Operation Bootstrap in the 1950s and for U.S. incentives. The U.S. gave tax incentives to industries that would open manufacturing in Puerto Rico. Uh, the unemployment continues to be a problem, and too many people live in poverty in Puerto Rico. Migration to the United States provides a safety valve for surplus labor to leave the, the island and come to the United States seeking jobs. Tax exemptions for corporations operating in Puerto Rico uh, ran out in 2006 and 7, and if not, re if they, they were not renewed, and the Puerto Rican economy is, is facing adjustment problems. The tertiary or service sector. Since the 1950s, the service sector, including government jobs, has grown to be the largest employer in the islands, typically over half the workforce. Uh, so this would include banking, offshore uh, banking, insurance, uh, tourism, not just government jobs, although that, that could be a big one. Most Caribbean island economies are heavily dependent on the service sector, which includes travel and tourism offshore services, and government employment. Tourism is now the backbone of the Caribbean economies and the leading earner of foreign exchange. Tourism generates jobs in hotels, restaurants, travel services, retailing, and construction. Tourism is a complex industry 
involving many activities from lodging to transportation, food services, and construction. Offshore services uh, are located in the, the Cayman Islands, Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, the Turks and Caicos, and they offer a multitude of services, including banking, insurance, and ship, ship registration. This uh, article doesn't mention it, but also the, the Dutch in uh, Curaçao and Aruba offer offshore services that are more or less aimed towards South America. These islands have advantages because the British connection provides stability and legality. Language is not a problem, and they are close to the United States. Other islands involved in offshore services include the Bahamas, Barbados, Nevis, and the Netherlands Antilles, the ABC Islands. Because of the U.S. embargo, Cuba does not provide any banking services to U.S. citizens. Uh, don't, don't, uh, if you take a credit card to Cuba, you're not going to be able to use it. You need to take cash because the banks there will not accept your credit card. Many international corporations deposit funds in offshore banks wishing to avoid high taxes in the mainland countries. Trade and economic integration. The Caribbean islands are heavily de trade dependent, and the U.S. is the most significant trading partner for many islands with the exception of Cuba. Over 80% of the exports from the Dominican Republic go to the U.S., and over half of the imports come from the U.S. The Netherlands Antilles carries on a lot of trade with Venezuela. Guadeloupe and Martinique are connected to the European Union as overseas departments of France, and most of their trade is with France. And that concludes our 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Was that the 12th? I think it was. Uh, presentation on the Caribbean. So uh, we have two more, that I, at least two more, possibly three. I'll be talking next week about uh, people and society. That will be about the demographics of the Caribbean, the demographic makeup, the ethnicities. And the week after that, we'll be talking about cultures. And then if there's time, I'll go over the uh, global the globalization of the Caribbean, although that there would be no quiz on that. So thank you for your kind attention. Please feel free to leave me comments down below in, down below in the uh, comment section and uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll be glad to try to answer them. Thank you. Bye.